welcome. My name is Vinod Mangalpara, and most of you know, but uh, we had uh, this, I just want to uh, present this as the concluding uh, session of the three uh, aspects of health that we saw. Uh, we talked about the sleep, the diet, and this time exercise. So let us take a minute of silence and before we begin into uh, understanding of or learning about the exercises, a very important aspect. Om Shanti. So I have one question for all of you. What is the most important aspect of our life that will make us happy? You just think about a, one aspect that will make you happy and just hold the answer. And I think all of you got it correct. We all probably chose the health that we feel, we feel happy when we have good health. We could have a lot of money, we could have everything, but if we are not feeling right in the body, then we can't enjoy. And uh, the health is directly related to our well-being and uh, exercise is a big part of our health. Uh, so I have a lot of information, medical information about the exercises. I will, we will quickly go through that and then uh, I, we will cover uh, some spiritual aspect and we'll have some question answers and at the end. All right, I think we all have this good uh, PowerPoint in a good view, hopefully, yeah. <clears throat> so let me jump into this because uh, there are some informations that we need to quickly cover. 
uh, what are the kinds of exercises, uh, three types of exercises, uh, aerobic exercises, uh, then muscle building exercises, also called as non-aerobic, and then stretching exercises. So let's look at them. Aerobic exercises, they are also known as cardio, cardiopulmonary exercises, where we work up our lungs and heart. And uh, uh, what happens is uh, we use uh, oxygen in this uh, exercise, this kind of exercises. Uh, and uh, we improve our uh, stamina of the heart and lungs. So aerobic exercises has to do with the oxygen consumption and uh, improved function of heart and lungs. Uh, what are the kinds of aerobic exercises? Uh, moderate intensity, are brisk walking, um, some water aerobics, bike ride on a, on a flat ground level or some, some hilly area, but not too much. Then uh, playing tennis, uh, lawn moving, and a vigorous intensity uh, aerobic exercises would include jogging, running, uh, right, swimming, riding and uh, on a hilly uh, areas, uh, playing single tennis and basketball. Then uh, muscle strengthening exercises. These are the, uh, these are focused exercises on our, some areas of the body. Uh, where we, for example, biceps, triceps, hamstring building muscle uh, exercises. Um, typically, uh, we use weights or some stretching bands to build these muscles. Uh, uh, the difference between this and the, uh, the cardio exercises is uh, the oxygen consumption is not that much. And uh, these exercises are relatively less <clears throat> uh, versus less in the same, the, the time-wise, the lab, the, the set that we do is not as lengthy as the cardio because we cannot do cardio. You can do, do hours, one hour, two hours, but this one, no. Uh, your muscle will get uh, really fatigued and tired. <clears throat> Then uh, we have uh, the, the other examples of the, the muscle strengthening exercises are the you know, resistance, like uh, a pull-up push-up, um, Surya Namaskar, or you know, the, the push-ups. Then uh, uh, weight, dumbbells, uh, digging, shoveling, some heavy, construction work, et cetera, gardening. Uh, so these are the strengthening exercises. They uh, basically focused on the strengthening of the muscles. Uh, the uh, one thing about the muscle strengthening exercises is uh, they, uh, we repeat uh, some sets we repeat uh, the movement, for example, biceps building. So there are repetitions seven, eight times to do this. And uh, it's called as one set. So usually what is recommended is one set for all long muscles. This is a busy slide, but I just want to give a summary. Uh, what is recommended is uh, all the long muscles of the body use one set. If you could do more than if you could do more than one set, that is better. But one set is generally recommended. 
Then a subcategory would be bone strengthening exercises or activities. The, uh, these are activities, they uh, promote the bone growth. Uh, it's very important uh, for uh, uh, aging population, uh, individuals over 55 to 60, especially women, uh, they, their bone strength decreases as hormonal changes occur. And, and uh, it is important that they maintain the strength of the bone with these kind of exercises. Uh, running uh, little weights, not too much though, uh, like uh, dumbbell exercises would be good. And uh, skip rope, you know, if it's not possible, I would recommend not to do it because uh, you might, if you have not, uh, toned your ankle muscles, uh, leg muscles, then you might, uh, you know, have a sprain. But I would just running, uh, light running, and a lifting weight would be good. Yes, Tai Chi would be good. Tai Chi uh, is also a good part of this exercises. Thank you, Sister Deborah. Then, we have stretching exercises. Uh, I put Tai Chi here too, because it, can, it has a very wide uh, scope. Uh, tai Chi at the beginner level could be just a relaxation stretching type of uh, exercise. It's a basic eight or 16 moves that they do. This could be that, but then there are higher level Tai Chi that, uh, or Qigong. These are usually uh, um, relaxing exercises. They stretch the, the uh, muscle, relaxes. They make the uh, joints uh, flexible, uh, improve the tone of the muscles, improve, improve the range of motion. Uh, these are very good exercises to, uh, before we begin any kind of, uh, um, weight building, uh, the uh, muscle building type of exercises. Uh, it's, uh, you can use this as a warm up exercise before you go to the muscle building. It, uh, because it tones up the muscles, uh, it improves the circulation in the ligaments and joints areas. It's a reduced chance of the sprain and tear, etc. Examples are yoga and Tai Chi. So this is the, these are the three main classes, aerobic, uh, non-aerobic, and stretching. Aerobic also called as cardio, cardiopulmonary exercises or cardio, uh, cardiovascular, you can say, uh, exercises. Okay, I just highlighted myself here. Then the, the, uh, the stretching. Which of these three uh, kind of exercises are important? We'll look at what are the recommendations, but just uh, as a purpose of, uh, of uh, you know, using our own mind what we what information we have uh, so that we we actively learn this uh, subject very well what is the just think of the exercise that is good for you with the reason why aerobic the muscle building and uh, the relaxation the stretching kind and uh, in fact, you know, I can just, if anybody wants to talk, I'll just put, unmute themselves. Okay. What the, 
uh, medical science say is the cardio exercises, the aerobics, more important. Why? Because everybody can do it. Uh, some of these exercises like muscle building exercises, weight lifting, etc. not everybody will be able to do it. Uh, some Tai Chi moves, you know, we can do some basic Tai Chi and yoga moves, uh, but beyond the basic, uh, not many people can do lots of complex yoga postures uh, and uh, the high level Tai Chi, Qigong, unless they get trained. But, uh, but the cardio exercises, you know, brisk walking, it's everybody can do it. Even when you are sick, you can do some walking. Uh, you can do some of those exercises that we saw in the cardio. And that's one thing why uh, it is uh, most important. Secondly, it, uh, uh, it improves the reserve of the heart and lungs. These are the vital organs of the body and it improves the circulation thereby of the whole body. So there is the emphasis on the cardio, cardio pulmonary exercises. And we saw uh, the, some of the examples as brisk walking, you know, water aerobics, everybody, almost everybody, even people with the fibromyalgia, their body hurts all the time. You know, they cannot do any activities. You put them in the water, they're able to exercise inside the water. That's the uh, you know beauty of the water because water takes your weight and uh, your weight whatever your weight is when you're in the water and exercise you feel uh, one third less you feel one third of the effort is needed to do the same exercise as outside so outside if you have hundred percent inside thirty three percent effort is needed to do the same activity inside the water because it takes the weight. It makes you, gives you a weight less. It gives you like a weight less, weightlessness. Bike ride on a ground level, you know, little, uh, um, with little practice, a lot of people can do that. Not pen, playing tennis though. So a little jogging, yeah, I can do it. Uh, and some of these things. So that's the Arabic, the purpose. Uh, then, <clears throat> Um, also, it is uh, important to combine, you know, not just I remain focused to my heart and lungs and neglect my biceps, triceps, hamstrings, you know, quadriceps. Because I need to walk, I need to have strength, I need to climb. So uh, you combine. It's, it's my thought that uh, it's a good idea to combine. You do a little cardio. As a as a warm up, and then you do the uh, uh, you do the little stretching exercises, little yoga moves or tai chi moves, basic tai chi moves, and then uh, you uh, do some muscle building exercises, some push ups, one or two, uh, some sit ups, etc. And then you can do some cardio. You can after that you can go for a walk, thirty minutes walk. So combine all three, not just, just like in the food, we say, you know, combine, you get all the little ingredients from different things, right? So same way. Now, next aspect, what are the benefits? These are the benefits of lots and lots of benefits of exercise. And uh, uh, to highlight some of these, it lowers the risk of mortality, death, death rate. It has been scientifically seen that if you exercise, the chance of accidental death or abnormal death would be much, much less. Lower risk of the heart disease, lower risk of the high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, maintain, you can maintain a good weight, you know, obesity, uh, uh, 
then your lipid profile is much better. You have, with the exercise, uh, you have increased level of HDL, you have lower level of LDL, which is ideal, which is all we want. And uh, then there is also correlation between lower risk of the cancers, bladder cancer, colon cancer, endometrial, et cetera, with the exercises. Um, then uh, some, and then improved bone function. Like I was saying, uh, elder, elderly population, they need to make sure that the bone health is better. So these uh, ex exercises are very important. The bone strengthening exercises uh, to counter that osteopenia or osteoporosis. Then some immediate benefits are, number one, reduced anxiety, immediate. All these things, okay, lower risk of the heart disease, et cetera. I don't know when uh, I will see the benefit, but right now, if I exercise today, I will see the immediate effect. And these immediate effects are reduced anxiety. If my mind is anxious, I get into, uh, I go into a nature walk, uh, I feel relaxed immediately. Or if I, uh, you know, in the habit of going to gym, doing some exercises, then I go to gym and I forget all this tension and anxiety and I'm in a good mood. It brings my, it brings a stability in my mood. It improves my thinking power also because uh, the exercises improves the circulation in the whole body. Uh, and a uh, brain requires uh, a lot of uh, oxygen and uh, blood supply. So when I exercise, they say improved activities of the brain, my power to think, cognition power improves a big time. And uh, that's one part, the blood circulation, but the second is I'm relaxed, I'm happier mood. And so I have uh, less tension and I can, I am more focused and I have improved cognition that way. <clears throat> Reduce the chance of dementia. You know, the people who have dementia, uh, you give them an exercise program, they can remember things better. They can remember the names of their relatives, etc. cetera. Uh, reduce chance of depression, improved sleep. These are immediate effect that you see, improved sleep. Uh, then you see um, you have increased, uh, uh, reduced risk of the falls you, because your balance is more, you are more balanced with the, with the exercises. Your muscles are toned, you have, you're more grounded. <clears throat> then uh, insulin resistance, you know, diabetes uh, is one of the big problems. And, uh, a, you know, two kinds of diabetes, we know that one kind is type one, where the pancreas do not secrete the insulin. Um, but the second one is the biggest uh, a problem uh, that is the diabetes type 2, where we have insulin, we do produce the insulin, but the, uh, the cells where the insulin work, uh, they, uh, they don't have the receptor. So they, uh, it is of, as if it's not there. Insulin is needed for the glucose, uh, the carbohydrate that we eat, the, it, uh, it's broken down into the glucose and the glucose is absorbed into the uh, blood and then it, it's uh, taken up by the cells. And this uh, insulin is important for that function. Uh, so uh, people with the insulin resistance, they, they cannot absorb the glucose from the blood. So the cells undergo starvation in the midst of plenty. There's a lots of glucose in the blood, but the cells cannot utilize that. So starvation in the midst of plenty. <clears throat> That's type two diabetes. With the exercise, uh, it is seen 
that uh, the uh, insulin resistance decreases. So all these benefits are there. Then uh, endorphin. You probably have heard about the brain endorphins. Uh, you know, if not, you, you, I'm sure you have heard about the morphine. Morphine is a painkiller. It is externally given either as an injection or a pill or some other form. Um, and that uh, kills the pain or decreases the pain uh, used as an analgesic good one. Our body has a similar substance as a morphine called endorphin. And it is secreted by the, the brain. And uh, this, this uh, uh, it acts on the different body, body uh, parts and does not let you feel the uh, pain. Uh, so these are kind of a hormones that are released into our system. Usually in, uh, in the situation of stress, um, it is seen that with when we exercise, it creates an environment similar to stress and our body secretes in a very balanced form uh, of that endorphin. And that endorphin makes you uh, feel uh, more endure, you become, you endure the exercise uh, uh, tolerance. You, you have improved stamina. People with uh, body pains, your generalized body pain like fibromyalgia, it's a very important uh, aspect because they are endorphins. They can, uh, when they exercise into the, into the water or outside, then they release this and it helps. So this is the article taken from uh, Cleveland Clinic uh, Foundation. And you can search this and you can uh, learn more about this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so the endorphins uh, can uh, like uh, exercises like a power walking, swimming, dancing, hiking, all these, or and all the other exercises that, that we see, that they uh, act in the same way. <clears throat> now, this is the information from uh, physical activity guidelines for Americans. Uh, this is a, a slogan from them, move more, sit less, you know, because uh, When we sit, you know, sedentary lifestyle, lifestyle is uh, has become is becoming more and more normal, and uh, that uh, leads to many of the diseases that we saw, uh, including uh, cardiac disease, coronary artery disease, uh, abnormal lipid profile, obesity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. Uh, all the, even the mental uh, conditions like anxiety, uh, depression, etc. So there's a, con they, it contributes to many of these conditions. So it is recommended that uh, we need, we need to move, you know, don't just sit around because uh, that uh, movement, even if it is not an exercise, even if you move from here to there, going from your house to the mailbox, instead of coming in and getting the uh, mail, you know, mail out of the mailbox while in the car, instead of that, come, you know, park your car, walk up to the mailbox and get your mail. That much little walking, uh, if you could do, it is considered as more beneficial. So, Figure out the uh, times, 
figure out the um, um, the task in which you can move yourself and versus just sit around. And <clears throat> so that, that will improve the big ones that are depicted here, you know, uh, decrease the chance of uh, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and uh, all these kinds of cancers. And so this is the graph that you can see here. This is the daily sitting time, and this is the uh, physical activity. The more uh, you become physically active, your, your graph will move from you know, left to right. And uh, the, the less you sit, uh, the, the graph will move from up to down. So going from this corner, to this corner is the goal going from you know going from this red zone to the green zone so the more you move from the red to the green the more you become healthy the more you uh, decrease the chance of all those uh, health hazards so think about think think through the, your daily activities and figure out where you can move you know that's the, their recommendations. Now, how much, how much uh, activity we need to do? Uh, these are based on the age, then also based on what is my goal, also based on uh, whether I have a chronic heart, uh, chronic uh, health problems, and also based on my physical status. You know, uh, the guidelines are not the same uh, for the adults. Um, you know, guidelines are not the same for the normal healthy person or the pregnant uh, ladies versus. Uh, children, they, they have, all have different guidelines. But today, because uh, I think the, we will just talk about the adults, okay? And then you can go into this website to have a specifics about, let's say you want to know about the children, then you'll learn about that. Or if you have a specific condition, I have arthritis, do I, is this the same recommendation for me? You can look up. But generally, we say this is the recommendation. Uh, at least uh, 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity activity. Uh, the cardiopulmonary kind of exercises, 150 minutes. 150 minutes sounds like a lot of time, you know. So uh, what is it, 60 times two, 120, so two hours plus. But over a period of one week. So if you break it down into uh, 30 minute sessions, it will come to like a five sessions. So 30 minutes, uh, five days a week. I can definitely do Saturday and Sunday. And then uh, on the weekdays, I'm working, but that I can still do alternative weekdays. Then I can do the five days. And if I'm too, too busy, let's say I cannot do even 30 minutes, that's too much. Then I could break it down to 15 minutes sessions and do it. But generally uh, it is say that 30 minutes, five days a week you do the aerobic exercises. Aerobic exercises, gold standard, brisk walking, 30 minutes, figure out where you want to go. You know, find some nice spot around the area where you live and uh, make a routine. Give yourself time, this is the time, so set your time and do it. And then plus, not just that, plus two days a week of activities that strengthen the muscles important. Like I was saying, combine, not just do one little thing, uh, you know, just the aerobics and neglect your muscles, neglect your bones. No, do everything. And so in this 
uh, brisk walking, I would also include yoga or Tai Chi as my warm up. You know, five to 10 minutes warm up and then uh, 15 to 30 minutes, uh, 15 to 30 minutes uh, of the, uh, the main uh, brisk walking and then five to 10 minutes slow down or cool down. There again, I can use the relaxing stretching exercises. So, and uh, I'm seeing the comments that there are some other recommendations, but these are the recommendations by this, uh, the uh, uh, physical activity guidelines for Americans. It's uh, one, one of the really respected uh, authority on this subject. Okay. So, that's how much uh, it's recommended minimum one should do. Uh, and then we'll take up, we'll look at the things like, what if I am sick? What if I have, you know, some uh, uh, heart problem? Then uh, there are other different recommendations. This is the, we saw that there are immediate effects uh, immediate effects are it boosts your mood, it, it reduces anxiety, it just takes you into a good place from, you know, having tension. It uh, improves your focus, your concentration, makes you feel better, reduces the stress, improves your sleep. These are the immediate uh, effect that is seen. And so if we remain focused to, if nothing else, I, that I, I don't know, uh, when my cholesterol will be, become better, uh, uh, or if I don't want to go in that area, at least I can see that, okay, I can have less, I can feel better by doing exercises. So that will give me a boost, give me uh, an, a, a motivation, incentive to do these exercises. So get more active, start feeling better now. This is the, you know, a slogan that we need to tell ourselves. And like we were saying, how much activities is needed? 150 minutes. One of these things, you know, these are, most of these are aerobics. And this is, uh, you know, this, see, you can see this person on a wheelchair still doing something, you know, lifting, having dumbbell in their hand or do something. So if you're sedentary, like say I'm on a wheelchair, what am I going to do? Pick up a dumbbell and do, you know, some exercise. Do some uh, a breathing exercises, you know, whatever you can do. You know, you can do the neck exercises, you can do shoulder exercises. If you're able to move your legs, you could still do. So a lot of things you can do. You just have to put your mind and heart in it and you'll be able to you'll be able to do it and uh, if you uh, cannot uh, don't have a lot of time then you start you know slow five minutes then then uh, go more and then two two days a week of the muscle strengthening activities important and uh, pay attention to all major muscles you can start with the biceps triceps quadriceps hamstrings, at least those. And don't forget the, the torso, you know, core strengthening, what is called as your muscles around your spine. Because if you strengthen the muscles around your spine, then, uh, you know, people who have back pain, uh, it is very useful for them. And uh, I, I know of the, a uh, lot of Tai Chi moves are, are those kinds of, uh, exercises where it helps the muscles around the spine. And, uh, you know, I could, we could uh, go into uh, um, the details of uh, the, some, which specific exercises is that, but let's finish this one and see if we have time. Okay, there's something called as a talk test. How do you know you're doing 
uh, vigorous exercises versus a moderate activity. So we say that moderate intensity aerobic activity is what we need to do. And we were saying that uh, the, the vigorous kind of activities are like playing single tennis or doing some very hard yard work, something like this, or even swimming uh, or riding a bike on a hilly area. I can't do that. But so moderate intensity exercises is what is recommended. Um, so how do I know if I'm doing that one or versus a vigorous activity? Uh, there's something called the talk test. As I'm doing this exercise, if I'm able to talk in a full sentence, then I know that it is a moderate intensity exercise. When I'm doing a vigorous exercise, I'm unable to talk in full, full sentences. I'll be able to uh, say words and then I'll have to pause to breathe. The full sentence will not come out from my mouth. Um, okay. And uh, these are the, the examples um, of uh, moderate intensity aerobic activities and muscle strengthening activities. Uh, these are the three uh, examples. If you are relatively healthy and able to do more, if you are able to jog and run, then you can do vigorous uh, aerobic activity and you can do more of these uh, kind of muscle activities. You can combine the two. You can do little moderate intensity exercises, a little vigorous. So I can, uh, 30 minutes, I can, 15 minutes, I can jog. And the next 15 minutes, I can, uh, you know, uh, walk. <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> Next is, uh, I want to, uh, let's look at this, uh, the screening, screening tools for, to estimate the potential disease risk. The sedentary lifestyle can potentially lead us into many diseases that we saw. What are the screening tools that tells me that I am at risk? These are the two. One is uh, estimate of the weight status. What is my weight uh, status? And uh, so, and uh, how, do I, how do I know what is my weight status? Body mass index. And the second is waist circumference. These two are very important tools that tells me I'm at risk or I'm not at risk, but it does not. These two are just the tools to tell, tell me that I'm at risk or not. It does not tell me whether I'm healthy or not healthy. These are not the tools to tell you whether you have a disease process so that you just need to remember. What is a body mass index? It is the weight in kilograms divided by the height in the square meters, height, height in meters squared. Um, so, um, how did they figure out this formula is, uh, it is based on the metabolic, uh, rate, you know, so they, um, uh, they studied the metabolic rate and they came up with this formula. This matches with the weight of the person, the, um, it gives the accurate risk assessment. So generally what is seen is uh, that what is a normal body mass index between 18.5, 24.9, that's the healthy weight. Overweight is anything about, anything 25 and above is overweight. And then 18 
and less 18 and a half and less is underweight. Both are bad. You know, some people think that I am low weight, so I'm healthy. No, anything out of this range is not healthy. Sometimes this can be more harmful than being obese, you know, underweight, you're malnourished, your body, um, um, you can't sustain uh, your different uh, body organs. Obese is about 30. Um, one formula, this is, sounds like a complex thing to calculate, right? So one way to calculate is uh, uh, you figure out your uh, uh, the weight uh, in, in the pounds, like say I, my weight is 150 or something like that. So uh, minus the 100, that's my, uh, and then that pound actually, the kilo, I'm sorry, not in pound, but the kilograms. So let's say my weight is uh, uh, 100, I'm not 100, but just say that. So if you minus 100, uh, that's that's my uh, uh, healthy weight. There are many different formulas, but then uh, there are even uh, if you go, if you go on the internet and uh, if you put in your weight and height, you'll get the accurate assessment. What's your body mass index? And most of the, the adults, uh, most of us, you'll be surprised that if you look for your body mass index, you are not normal. I think that I'm normal, but if I put in, put in my a BMI, look at, I will be, uh, most of us Americans will be overweight. So that's a surprising fact, but it's truth. And then, uh, so once, if you know that you're overweight, uh, you need to figure out how you can come in the healthy range. Then the weight, waist uh, circumference, uh, waist uh, circumference, why waist? Because uh, whatever we, uh, calories that we take, it is deposited in the, around the abdomen area. And so you can, uh, this is, you can uh, assess the excessive fat in that area. So if you have a lot of excessive fat in this area, then uh, you are at a greater risk of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, type two, hypertension, coronary artery disease. Uh, so this, this is the general guide, more than 40 inches for men, more than 35 inches for women, you have a higher risk you are at a higher risk. And how do you do the waist measure, measurement? Um, you measure at the level of the, uh, the iliac crest. You know, if you put your hand on your, on your, uh, on your waist, <clears throat> you put your hand on your waist like this, this is the bones. If you can feel that, that's the area where you want to measure like this. Okay. Waist circumference. Um, and then this is the number. More than 35, more than 40 inches. So this gives you an immediate assessment what I need to do, you know. If you have like instead of 40, you have 42, you need to do something. Change your diet, work on your exercise. Okay, then important to know the safety. You know, all these exercises we talked about, but we need to have safety, we need to do it safely. You can't just start to do a dumbbell exercise just because you are 42 in your waist or something. You have to first know your limitations. Secondly, you need to know uh, how your body status is. Is it uh, safe for you to proceed doing some kind of exercises? If you definitely, if you have a chronic condition like diabetes, 
Um, if you have arthritis or some kind of a lung or heart disease, you need to consult your doctor first. And, uh, or even if not doctor, at least a trainer and ask them, is this exercise good for me? And then you make a good plan for yourself and then do it. <clears throat> know the risk and benefits of each of these exercises that we saw. Uh, we, uh, if you remember in the cardio, uh, there was one, uh, um, a place where we saw that the rope, you know, rope, uh, uh, rope exercises, skipping rope exercises. Uh, but should I do skipping rope exercises? If I'm, if I have, uh, you know, arthritis in my ankle or the the knees, and if I start to do skipping rope exercises, I will, uh, you know, have uh, uh, problems. I'll sprain my leg and I'll have more problems. I'll become more sedentary. So just know your body, what you can do, and then you go proceed from there. Start from slow, uh, you know, slow. Don't just jump into 30 minutes. If you have not done, never done exercises, Start from five minutes, increase to 10, 15, like this. But be consistent, whatever you do. Then uh, use the um, um, use the wisdom. You know, you don't want to get dehydrated running in the or brisk walking in the summertime. You know, you need to drink water if you're if it's a uh, summer before you go for the cardio and after so that you remain well hydrated. <clears throat> and so these are the references. Uh, the biggest reference is this physical activity guidelines for Americans. And then uh, this is the CDC, Center for Disease Control. So these are very respectable and very accurate uh, website from where the recommendations come. Uh, so the most important take on that I would recommend for you to know, do take on, take home message is this one, 150 minutes a week and two days a week of muscle strengthening, 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic activity. Now we will go into some two other aspects. So let me uh, let me stop the share here for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> Having said all this, we all know, and we we all probably um, are aware of a lot of these things. But including me, are we doing exercises? Are we doing it? I'm not doing it. Like how it is recommended, I'm not doing it. And congratulations to one hand that came up who say that they're doing it. So that's good. And uh, I'd, like, I'd like to know from those of you who do it, on a regular basis exercises because i that is the key we want to know what is it that keeps you going that's the most important thing you know because uh let's say i exercise for 10 days and then uh all of a sudden after 10 days for two days i stopped two or three days i stopped then do I lose the benefits that I gained? What do you think? I, let's say I exercise for like 10, 15 days nicely, just like how it is recommended. And then for two, two, two days, I just give a break. Saturday, Sunday, yeah, I, I didn't wake up and, and uh, I just took it easy. Do you think I will lose the benefits? Yes, yes, yes. 
I will lose, I will go down to zero stage. Okay. So the, a similar example, uh, if you eat, for example, let's say you, you eat 10 days and then two days you stop eating, will it work for you? No, you got to eat every day. So you eat every day, you same way, you have to exercise every day. If not, let's say you're sick, you're not unable to do the exercise. Do some little things, you know, do move from here to there, from this corner to that corner. Do little what you can. It's important. So move yourself is the key. So uh, the, the, it is important to do it on a regular basis. So the question is how? How do you do it on a regular basis? What is, what is it that will keep you going? Because we, we can lose interest in doing exercises, you know, for many reasons. What are some of the reasons that we, we tell ourselves or we find uh, for us not to do exercises? Number one would be, I don't, I don't have time today. I have so many meetings or I have, you know, <laughs> a lot of things to do. So that's number one, don't have time. But you got to make time, you know. You, you prioritize uh, the most important thing. And it sounds like uh, for me, uh, my meeting is the most important. But who is going in the meeting? I'm taking my body in the meeting here. So my body needs to feel fit. So I need to make room, accommodate uh, my routine to give importance to my, the most important instrument, my body, and do whatever little that I can do. If not, you know, half an hour, give 30, 15 minutes. Do some stretching while you're, uh, while you're uh, you know, watching the screen. Put your screen up and with the screen up, you can do some stretching exercises, can you not? You don't have to sit and have a look at the screen, right? So you can definitely do some exercises. You know, I don't recommend, but you know, what I personally do, let's say I don't have any time and I'm sitting in the car. If I'm on a straight road and there is no traffic, I will do something like this, you know, movement of my hand or something, you know, I can always do like this. Of course, not move the neck like this, but I can at least do this kind of exercises. I can do this. Can I not? I can do this. You know, one hand is on the steering wheel. I can do this. I can do this kind of exercises, you know, resistance. I'm not using dumb, dumbbell in my hand, but I can do what is called an isometric kind of exercises. I can do re breathing exercises, right? When there is no traffic, of course. If there's traffic, I need to remain focused with my two hands on the wheel, my mind in the front. So, but you have to have that you know, new uh, you have to find that newness in your technique, where, how you can exercise, how you can give importance to your body. Then the body will be really helpful to you. You are in the meeting, your body will be really relaxed and nice. You can sit and you can you know, do what you need it to do. So that's the first thing, uh, giving importance to body, uh, knowing uh, the benefits of exercising. Um, what else you can do? What else we can do so that we remain, we, we remain committed to a routine of doing exercises? You know, of course, sleep, you know, uh, if I have a lot, if I have a busy day ahead, I plan my sleep accordingly. I wake up a little bit earlier than I can. 
I normally will, and then do exercise because that's the time I need to exercise morning. Uh, I, I, my mind is sharp. I, I'm, you know, letting my mind work what I needed to do, but then I can exercise simultaneously. Now, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, introduce a, a new, little bit, a different concept, a spiritual aspect of exercise. What I can do spiritually. Um, spiritually, uh, you know, we, the people who meditate, they, uh, their focus is on the spirituality mainly. And their, they, their focus moves from the body to the mind and from mind to the soul. And so they, we become a little bit of neglectful to our body, but we need to know that to be healthy is to be happy because our goal is to reach to our, um, our the core value of happiness peace and happiness, these are the values. And so if, if I'm healthy, if my body's healthy, then I can be happy. And so I need to do everything uh, to make sure that my body remains healthy. And uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to sleep well, I'm going to eat well, and I'm going to exercise well. So those. Uh, and then I uh, also want to share one other aspect of spirituality. Mind the spiritual body of the body. They recommend that uh, when you exercise, uh, if you exercise alone, it is likely that you will stop doing it one day or you will skip one day. So if you have, uh, they recommend that you, uh, you know, go in a group or go do it in a family or a friend, then it's less like it is, a, it would be less likely that you would uh, not exercise. Because let's say you feel lazy, but your friend will just pull you in. And then so that way, if you have a buddy, you have a higher chance of being consistent in doing exercise. Spiritually, what I can do is I can use my mind. I can uh, uh, use a spiritual body and the spiritual body of I, the soul, spiritual body of the body is the mind. Okay, so this, the body is wanting to do the exercise and I pair my mind with the body. What does the mind do? Mind thinks. What else the mind do? Mind feels. So I work on my thoughts and feelings as I exercise my body. So hand in hand, there's a double advantage in this exercise. By exercising the mind, I improve the quality of my thoughts and feelings and I experience the true happiness. I uh, release those endorphins that we saw in our brain. And that additionally gives the, the advantage of uh, doing exercise, the bodily exercise. So body also feels that this uh, happiness that comes from within me, I'm not dependent on outside. I'm not dependent on, uh, on a, a outside body. I am emerging this uh, uh, the happiness from within by exercising my mind to emerge clean, pure, positive, powerful thoughts and by feeling good, by uh, um, silencing the, the, the inferior feelings, all the different feelings that, that we feel, silence that with my mind power. And what remains is just the bliss or happiness. 
that's the one I feel constantly because that's my inner core. When all the feelings are gone, that's the one that remains happiness. So I, I can exercise my mind to emerge this happiness from within. And then I exercise along with that. Practically, how can you do that? Uh, practically, I can churn. Uh, I should have a little bit of knowledge about I, the soul, to, for me to do this exercise. And what that little bit knowledge that I need to have? Just if nothing else, I am a peaceful soul, that knowledge. I'm a soul who is, whose basic nature is peace. I'm a soul whose basic nature is, is love. Okay, these are the ex two examples. And just hold this thought. I'm a peaceful soul. And by just by holding this thought, I silence the other waste kind of thoughts. That includes what I'm going to do in the future, in next 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So by silencing, I really remain focused and become very concentrated and remain happy also. And also in this silence, my the inferior uh, feelings or emotions, they silence down. So my mind is silent, my heart is silent. So my mind is now focused, my heart is now uh, feeling the happiness. And then I exercise holding this thought. I'm a peaceful soul and exercise. Okay, that's one example. Uh, this is, uh, I had previously talked about this and this is the essence of that talk. So I just want to include it here. How we can exercise in our mind, the gym, you know, the uh, example of, I go to the gym and in the gym, there is ambience, there's a music that is going on. And I have my exercise buddy with me and we exercise together and uh, we, uh, work on our building our muscles and we have a reward system that after my exercise I stop by the Starbucks and have coffee or something so this is the how we do it outside body wise but uh, how do we do it in the mind my my gym is my stage who what is my stage is, my stage is my innermost feeling. That is my stage. My awareness is my consciousness. My awareness is I'm a soul. As a soul, what is my feeling? What is my most basic foundation feeling? The bliss, the happiness. That is my stage. So with my awareness that I'm a soul, my foundation feeling is I'm a happy soul, I'm a blissful soul. I'm bliss meaning I'm not getting uh, influenced by ups and downs. I'm okay, constant. That's my stage. So I work being on that stage. Then I use the, the noise cancellation device. Noise cancellation device is my attitude, my memory. My attitude of positive attitude that arises from my deep memories. Deep memories are, I am a loveful soul. I'm a happy soul. So these loving attitude, the, the, the thoughts that emerges from being on that stage are always positive. There is no trace of the negative. 
if my if my base feeling is I'm a blissful soul, this guaranteed hundred percent thoughts arising from this stage is going to be the positive type of thoughts, and that is my attitude, my vibrations, and these vibrations I can uh, spread into my body. It goes, it affects my mind, it affects my heart, it affects my body, it, every cells, every organs. Not only that, it affects the outside, it spreads into the atmosphere, it uh, <clears throat> affects the people who are around me. So they can also feel that peace. Then I have the exercise body. My exercise body is my intellect who is the who is the the friend who will exercise it is my intellect who is taken taking the 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 taking me into the exercise session and that as my exercise body is uh, guiding my it will guide guide my mind into having pure thoughts and then my reward system is my happiness in my heart and my active building uh, of the muscles are my intentions. So this is the, uh, the diagram of the inner world. This is the outer world. This is the inner world. So when I am on that stage, I am, I'm on the stage of I'm a soul, then I'm influenced by my basic uh, nature, which is, you know, the peace, purity, love, etc. So my mind, my uh, intellect, everything is influenced by these. And so what I emerge is uh, pure and positive. I'm not influenced by my, my memories here, uh, my memories, my recent memories, my past and my distance, distant past memories, which may not be good, but my deepest memory is from where I'm influenced. <clears throat> and I'm, of course, not influenced by the world. I am the influencer. I am the one who makes a difference. Yeah, that's the intellect is our spiritual body. Uh, who is smart and strong, who I can trust. So I always follow. I think I'm going to stop it right here. Okay. Um, anybody has any question, comments, or any insights? Anything that I missed? Uh, if anybody wants to add to this, I would be, you know, thankful to them. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everybody. All right. Um, just some things to keep me motivated, um, at least is some stretching. If I don't do stretching in the morning, some yoga stretches, 20 minutes, I uh, I can get in trouble. My back could feel very stiff or I could twist and lift something wrong and go into spasm. So it's it's just a good thing to do. And sometimes we might have a, Deborah and I might have a, some commentary playing or something too. And it's just like a routine we're in that helps. And as Sister Fern said the other day, it's so important, the Chinese say to, to have legs, get your legs. Uh, if you're in on that, legs are so important. So we go for walks and, and try to go for a pretty good hike on the weekends, somewhere out west or wherever. A couple, uh, went to almost four miles the other day. And, um, it does, of course, affect your mind and your self-respect, and, and it's better than just going the other way because we just say, use the parts that still work. If you think <laughs> all the parts don't work, use what does work and get something moving, you know? You know, use what you have or you lose it, that old expression. And it, it's becoming so true. So we're, um, we're pretty active with that. And sometimes we might, uh, as a partner, Deborah's my partner, 
we might talk about some early point or virtue or just a, just the breathing or how good it feels to be out and um, and to just um, connect with nature maybe and to just balance ourselves out more that way. So it, it is very beneficial and it's something that if I let it slip for a day or two, I could easily feel it backsliding and uh, that's not a good payoff. It doesn't have a good ending. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> That's very important, yes. And I like you said, uh, you play something in the background, so music, yes. Use of the music is yeah. uh, it's very important uh, That because that keeps you, uh, you know, focused. Mm -hmm. Yes. The same as meditating every day, at least, uh, you know, every night doing a little chart work, even a few moments on the sit corner of the bed, sit there and review a couple points maybe and just that pattern you know it's just part of life nowadays and it and it's such a good thing to have and it's free if it's free it's for me you know yeah, we can <laughs> we can do so many things that are free and like jim says when we stretch in the morning um not that i sometimes i'll start feeling guilty if i do do it you know because you get into that habit and you know how you feel and it feels good and um we usually swim a lot and then I guess during the winter we got out of the habit because it'd be raining so much and you didn't want to go outside and you know you could think of a million excuses not to exercise it's so easy and then it kept going to the bottom of the list oh I'll do it in the afternoon that doesn't work you know you got to do it right away and and actually we're starting to go back into swimming again and I can't believe how good I felt after yeah. that swim. Yeah. The Today, endorphins and, and yeah. you have your energy and it mm -hmm. really, really works. So, yeah. Sister Hema said, uh, be good to your body. Your body's been good to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a nice go-to line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. Because that's your best friend. Yeah, it is. Uh, and in the spirituality, we tend to forget that. Mm -hmm. We think that we are the soul and the body becomes secondary. Mm -hmm. More than others, I think the, the meditators need to remain, you know, need to remember that body is important. Right. It sure is. I know Sister Deborah one day, uh, as you had talked about uh, the somatic exercises. And I was thinking where the somatic exercises is placed in this one. And I was thinking maybe in the stretching type mm -hmm. uh, or even spiritual type. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Between stretching and spiritual. <laughs> More about awareness, isn't it? Not so much about movement. Yes, <laughs> spiritual. That's the, that's the mind body of the body. Mm. Om Shanti Vinod Bhai, thank you for the uh, wonderful presentation. Yes. I did mention the Feldenkrais method, which is a fabulous somatic movement alignment technique as well. And I don't know if you heard of it. No, Felden, Feldenkrais, Feldenkrais method. Uh -huh. It's fantastic. I won't go into it now because... <clears throat> Explain, but um, that's a very good therapeutic alignment, especially after injuries. Or in general, I think it's wonderful to get a Feldenkrais session every now and then, just uh, for the body, because I mean the the body is a temple of the soul, right? So I yes, think it would be very beneficial. For anybody, all ages. <laughs> Shanti. Oh, thank you. I'm going to share that Feldman Christ movement. Alignment. I believe I did uh, write it in the chat. Yeah. yeah, but it only comes to me. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So here we go. This is for everybody. Feldman Christ movement alignment therapy. It's actually called the Feldenkrais method, but okay. Anyway, if you if you just Google Feldenkrais, it will come. 
Thank you. Okay, so let's take it. So let us uh, make effort to uh, be good to our bodies and uh, let us take a few moments of meditative silence. And remember that we are the the responsible beings of our body, our bodies. And <clears throat> Simultaneously with our responsibility, we realize that we depend on our bodies to this is our most valuable instrument in this world. So we need to take care, good, take good care of it. Give it the best. Just like how the parent will do everything for their child. We the knowledgeful masters will take good care of our bodies. Finding the best food, giving it the comfort, letting it rest. adequately. And not stress, not burden it with additional work when it needs to rest. and make sure that we give the nourishment of the power, the strength that it needs through exercise. I become knowledgeful and understanding and through this understanding power, I make sure that my mind willingly follows into a very healthy pattern of exercise. Om Shanti.